the cathedral of every diocese is the seat of the bishop. The architecture must depict the stained glass and grandeur as the designated principal church within a diocese. Such was the intention, and so it was by the time construction of the Holy Spirit Cathedral was completed. During his episcopal visit to Ghana from Kenya, Archbishop David Matthews mooted the idea of a cathedral for Accra Vicariate, then headed by Monsignor Adolf Alexander Noza, SVD. Not long after this visit, on Mission Sunday, October 19, 1952, a pontifical high mass was celebrated under a palm branch shelter erected on the site during which the blessing and groundbreaking ceremonies took place. In his sermon, Bishop Noza said, and I quote, The motive of building such a grand church is not that of pride, but of the desire to give glory to God in a cathedral church expressing and symbolizing Catholic unity. This will not be a church for any particular city, nor for any particular tribe, neither will it be built by an isolated group of Catholics." Unquote. Thereafter, work started earnestly by Father Joseph Jude, a building engineer who had come from Switzerland. He was assisted by brothers Paul, by the Rukus and Bernard. On Sunday, January 5, 1957, Bishop Bowes declared, and I quote, There will be Mass at the cathedral every Sunday at 7 a.m., and everyone is free to attend. Unquote. Thus, the newly built magnificent cathedral was officially opened for public divine worship. On March 3, 1957, at a pontifical high mass, Bishop V. D. Bronk of Kumasi consecrated the cathedral. The actual decree declaring the cathedral as a parish took effect on 5th February 1958, thereby absorbing the St. Joseph Parish in Adabraka. It is interesting to note that Catholics from all walks of life contributed to some of the furnishings of the Holy Spirit Cathedral. As recalled by the Metropolitan Archbishop of Accra, Most Reverend Charles Gabriel Palmer Buckle, parishioners and pupils of St. Joseph Catholic School in Adabraka were taxed to bear partial costs of the floor, walls, and pillar tiles. He was one of those pupils of St. Joseph's School who paid for the floor tile. Today, the same cannot be said of the cathedral after all these decades of you, many parts of the building are cracked and need professional engineering treatment. And the ceiling is also weak and we need to replace it. Stained glass are broken in several parts. Iron rods are rusted and so cracks on the ceiling on some parts of the cathedral. This area only indicates that water has seeped through the wall and so it has to be corrected. This is part of the window which is damaged. Many several places of the cathedral need our attention for a complete restoration. We want the cathedral to be ranked among the cathedrals of the world and it has to take its rightful place if we have to correct all these damages. What we are seeing now is the foot of the image of Mary which has been damaged. We have to repair it. Part of the ceiling has gaping holes that must also be repaired. This really involves a bit of work. The floor tiles are damaged due to cracks and it has to be worked on. This is part of the floor tiles, the area around the, where the quarries sit. 
War tiles are also damaged and have to be replaced. Now this area near the sitting place of the quarry stairs has a very severe crack running through the entire length of the cathedral. This is an engineering problem that has to be corrected. Stained glass are damaged and it has to be repaired. This cannot be said of our magnificent cathedral. Window frames are damaged due to the exposure to weather. It has to be repaired. We are seeing the area leading to the tower, the stairway. And this is the roof of the cathedral. This roof has been there for many years. To the left, the wall we are seeing is called the parapet. Now, to the right, we also have the parapet. On top of the parapet, we have lightning arrestors. In the distance, we can see the vent. These vents are supposed to take the heat out of the cathedral and also to cool the temperature inside. We have a damage to the roof. Now, as you can see, these roofing sheets have outlived their usefulness. They are weak. Originally, they were not brown, but due to the weather and several years of use, we can see visibly they look tired. We see all the nail points. The whitish spots we are seeing are all the damages that have been repaired. This is part of the parapet that are cracked. We can see in this video that the roof has been re-roofed again. We want to appreciate the generosity of our parishioners and our generous donors who came to our aid when we had passionately appealed for support to re-roof. We have successfully done this re-roofing. And so the perennial leakages we have been experiencing over many years is now a thing of the past. It belongs to our history. We are so grateful to our parishioners, the parishioners of the Holy Spirit Cathedral. We are still looking forward to mobilizing enough funds to be able to complete other structural challenges that we are facing so as to give the cathedral a new rebranding. From outside, these cracks are not too visible. We will only appreciate the damage when we are very close to the spot, especially at the top. Now this is not too good. The whole thing has to be knocked off and properly cast. Then after that, it will be painted. It was given a special treatment. And that has to be done after we have repaired it. All this is part of the parapet. Damaged. We see the crack. The horizontal crack. Now this is part of the ceiling. Inside. The down where we see the whitish substances is the ceiling, acoustic ceiling. Then we also have the trusses holding the roofing sheet in the distance, not too visible. These trusses are made of steel and have to be painted. They are all metals. They have to be painted. Now these cracks, as we can see, are the area from the point of the roof towards the very top of the tower. So this is part of the tower wall. It is also severely damaged in some parts. All these cracks have to be repaired.
Otherwise, with time, they become extensive. These are broken part of the walls that have chipped off with the iron rods exposed. Now this is the cross and this is damaged from the base and so it is advised that we bring down the entire cross, recast it and put it back on top. The frontage of the cross is a metal plate that have been molded in the form of a cross attached to the concrete work. This plate is completely gone due to severe weather and also the exposure to sea breeze. Now this area is the entry point from the stairway to the very top where we have the cross. Now what we are seeing down there is a rail that allows the top cover to be opened to give access. It is damaged and have to be replaced. The whole thing has to be replaced. From the tower, we see a panoramic view of Accra. Very beautiful indeed. And this is where the cathedral commands its authority as a magnificent building. In its grandeur, it commands respect and also exercises authority as the mother of all the Catholic churches within the archdiocese. And it is second to none in the entire country. And so it is a monumental building, our heritage, and we have to protect it. This is our time to contribute to restoring the cathedral. Let us rise up like Nehemiah and build that temple. We shall be remembered for our contributions. God bless you.